Well, good evening. I'm Rick Dancer. Welcome to Get Real with Rick Dancer. And if you are kind of new to our audience and you have a, a special disdain for Facebook, um, we have a new option for you. You can go to rickdancer.com. That's my website. This will be generating live from there and on Facebook. And then we put it on Instagram and all YouTube. And it also generates live on YouTube. So if you don't want to watch on Facebook, which I get a lot of people aren't hanging out on Facebook as much anymore. Um, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Zuckerberg better be watching that. He's going to be in trouble if not. So tonight we have a great show for you. Um, just uh, one topic. Well, actually many topics, one person. Uh, Dr. Michael Bratlin is going to be on here and you know how some of you got your undies in a bundle because you put up that billboard about um, no more lockdowns and then remember some of you got your undies in a bundle because Dr. Bratlin put up that billboard about back the blue and then a bunch of you got really pissy when we put up the Elon Musk and Joe Rogan you rock uh You'd think that we'd said Jesus wasn't real. Um, I don't know what happened to people, but man, you got angry. So we're going to talk about why that's so important to Dr. Bratlin tonight. And you can ask him questions. And we're just going to have a conversation. We're going to do like a we're going to do like a Joe Rogan conversation. So let's start off with a little bit of open, and we'll bring Dr. Bratlin on here. We got some sponsors tonight too. I got to tell you about. Um, Rosa Realty is one of our sponsors tonight. Compton Family Wines out of Philomath is also one of our sponsors tonight. And then, of course, Dr. Michael Bradlin. So let's kick off the show. Who puts up with this? That's what I don't understand. Bring the lion out. Bring the, bring the lion. Um, tonight on our show, we're going to have... Hey, guys, don't you think it's kind of fun? that you get to comment on the news. There's a cost. Oh yeah, there's a cost. People come after you. Like, I think that's why this is so much fun is because... We'll see you at five. And joining us now, Dr. Michael Bratlin. So people do come after you, don't they, Dr. Bratlin? <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> so you have been... Um, I think it's funny because already people are coming on here. It's like I'm seeing numbers starting to shoot up here. People want to know what you're talking about, I think. Um, you you came out really early in the whole pandemic and started saying, you know what, people got to, we can't do this lockdown thing. And you put up the billboard or the the, the, the thing on the, the um, oh, out there on 99 with all the business people talking about no more lockdowns. Why Why did you come out so fast on that? Well, it was dragging on and and on, and I felt like it was hurting our society, or you know, the jobs. And uh, um, I mean, they were, I understood the the lockdowns at first, but then when they kept on going, and then I, the first billboard I was going to do because I was getting tired of driving and seeing you know people. There's the billboards that had signs with people with masks that said "Mass Matter," and I remember talking to you. I'm like, I wanted to do a billboard that said uh, it said uh, 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 "Jobs Matter," "Economy Matters." Uh, because it's just as important. And we locked down and looking back, I think it was a bad thing to do. I mean, I think at first it was good, but it just was dragging out, dragging on for a long time. And so that's why I wanted billboards and then kind of shifted. And then, you know, with your help, we decided to do a, um, decided to do a billboard that kind of had, had different business people and like no more lockdowns. And people, when we put that billboard up, there are people like, that's stupid. Kate Brown's not gonna go back into lockdowns. And sure enough, didn't it? It went right, but we went back into lockdowns. And uh, where we had to wear masks again, where they restrict the uh, number of people in restaurants. And uh, it was, uh, I just knew it. And, and part of me wants to do another billboard, like, hey, no more mask, because probably what's gonna happen after the November election, we're probably gonna have a short stint of mask again from Kate Brown. And you, um, you took some heat for that billboard back to blue. That's the one you took the most heat for. Cause you actually had some damage done to your office. Yeah. The first, the very first weekend, somebody tore down the sign. That's why we have cameras loaded up all around the offices, neighbor offices pointed that sign. So good luck. Um, uh, but we, and we also have the police that come by now and, uh, I, I called them and they said they do drive-bys. Uh, but yeah, they took down the sign right away. And we've got a lot of like hate, emails uh sometimes some, some people will call and leave messages i get a lot of uh, one star reviews but i, kinda, I gotta like the one star reviews because i'm like i'll just respond like hey uh 
uh, you know, give us an opportunity. I can tell that, you know, by your name that you're not a patient of ours. So, uh, you know, come by and see us because we take care of everybody. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're left or right. We're going to take care of you and we treat everybody the same. But isn't that the way it was supposed to be? I mean, it's always been before. You didn't you didn't go to a doctor based on your political party or what yeah. they believed about your medical, you know, other than your yeah. your, your faith. Whether if you if you haven't had your measles vaccine, well, you're not coming to I'm not going to your clinic. I mean, that's just it's just crap. Yeah. Oh, it's really weird. We got dentists still that I think that are sitting there. Uh, I, well, at least last year we were getting patients because they were they were told by their dentists that they must be vaccinated. Like nowhere have we been told that our have to be vaccinated, and so that was that was overstepping the boundary. So patients with us, it's not my business whether you're vaccinated or not, and quite honestly, your vac- business whether I'm vaccinated or not. And so, I mean, we have requirements, but uh, it's it's just not my patients are not even asking me that. Okay, let me show you a video. Chris Dental. For all those of you that sat back and did nothing while our civil liberties were taken away from us the last two years, shame on you. Shame on you for not fighting for our kids to be back in school and not having to wear masks. Shame on you for buying into political science, not actual science. For all those who did nothing next time, and there will be a next time, don't be complacent. Actually fight back. There will be a next time. What do you mean? So I just lost you for a second. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, what was the question? So you said it, they will be back. What do you mean? I just worry that, I mean, this is, the COVID is never going anywhere. And so we, you know, it's funny how we got out of our mask mandate at actually a time that our COVID was really high. This last February, they mentioned that, like, they took away the mask. So I think it, would be, it was more political. But once Kate Brown's out of office or, you know, the legislation's out of office because, they're, they're, you know, she can't be the next governor, I think we're going to end up having a short stay of, of mask. It'll be surprised me if we won't, if we don't. I mean, you're starting to see that kind of happen around the country again. Um, so I just I worry I worry there's going to be some kind of restriction. And hopefully this fall, the kids don't have to wear masks again. But with the with the politi- with the elections coming up, it probably won't happen until after the elections. So why aren't you afraid? Oh, I don't care. I mean, the worst thing they do is take away my license. And uh, I mean, I'm not doing anything illegal in my office. That's you know, I, I I'm compliant with everything. But uh, I mean, what are they going to do? Take away my license or my uh, shut me down because of I, my freedom of speech? Like, like people should be allowed to say what they want. And, and the reason I do the billboards is because it, it, it hits more people. And I'm not trying to piss people off. I'm just trying to let my, I, I don't want the lockdowns. And then it was, uh, you know, back to blue. There's nothing wrong with back in the blue. We need more people supporting, uh, supporting our police departments. And, uh, and they, they need to be dri- Policemen need to be driving around and seeing that billboard and, and feel good because uh, they've been crapped on. And, and now with the, uh, with the new billboard, it wasn't, you know, some people you had told me, cause I don't even read, read my comments that people had made comments that I was just trying to get attention from Joe Rogan and, and, uh, and Elon Musk. And I don't care about their opinions. Uh, but I like the fact that they're free thinkers. They believe in freedom of speech and we, uh, that's why I kind of applauded them. Uh, and I said, Hey, they rock, which was a good time because certain things came out. Um, and I don't believe in all their views, but I, we used to be a country that you could actually have views and not hate people. And that's what I think those two people represent is they, they're OK with have people having different views. It's good to have different views. OK, I'm going to show the video real fast. You know, one of the dumbest comments, and I'm going to call it the dumbest, dumbest comments I got online about that. Somebody put it on a caught in, uh, caught on tape in Lane County or something, and people were going ape shit about it. Like <laughs> it was like, you know, you, it was it was so stupid. But the biggest thing they said was that people were mad about was that why would he spend that kind of money to put up that when it could be used for a better cause? And, you know, you know, so what I tried to explain to people was that the cause wasn't 
Joe Rusk and Elon Musk, and they're yeah. not your superheroes. It's that somebody was sticking up for freedom. And these people, these critics just could not get that. To me, how much money, the, the, the small amount of money you spent putting up that billboard to, to fight for freedom, do they not believe that freedom is worth fighting for? Then they should move to another country and not live here. And they would have shot me down, which is kind of ironic because that's what the whole billboard's about. It's about freedom of speech. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, they... Uh, they want to they want to censor me and uh and that's why i get low comments and you know eugene weekly and, and a lot of people bash on me but i'm just i i support free speech and and i don't care i don't care what your view is i mean i just i think it's it's good it's healthy i, I had a patient the other day and she's super sweet but she was she was talking politics which i typically won't unless somebody brings it up but she was she was on the left and i was right and she got so mad i'm like listen i still love you i think you're awesome and, but i could tell she was so mad i'm like i wonder if she's gonna not come back anymore and i'm like why not because i'm gonna treat you the same way whether you have you know whether you have purple hair or you're on the left or whether you're super conservative i don't care i really don't care and that's how it was, Rick, when we were growing up. I mean, you're a little bit older yeah. than I am, but, but people didn't care. We, you know, you, you, it, we, they didn't get so mad at you. No, you didn't. I mean, for, for people like you and me who tend to be a little bit more conservative, I mean, what? You, so you're living in Eugene and Springfield, one of the most liberal areas in the country. I mean, do you think, do, do people out there really think that we haven't um, – come to terms with that. It's like, yeah. I don't feel, you know, it's like, now I don't live there now and I'm much happier living yeah. here in Montana um, because you could, but you know what I've noticed being here in Montana is I, I get into conversations and I start to pull back because I'm thinking that I may say something that sounds too right um, that for, for my audience when, when at home, that would get people, oh, wait a minute. What's Rick Dancer? Yeah, you, you, always here, yeah. you just talk and nobody gives a shit, you know? You know, everybody does that that's on the right now. If they want to say, if anybody wants to say they supported Trump, they always have to say, well, they have to they always have to get a disclaimer. Uh, if you're a little bit too right, you have to disclaim. And I hate that. And and we shouldn't be that way. And I'm actually getting more bold. I mean, I'm already bold anyway, but people ask me stuff. I'm like, yeah, I voted for Trump. And I think Trump would be better candidate right now. Absolutely. Yeah, but why? you have to be careful. Why? 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 He might be a little like because he he knew how to run a business, and as a business owner, you have to make decisions quickly, and you can't you can't micromanage everything. And I saw that in him. And I you know I, I you know I'd vote for him again. And uh, and I know people think oh that's horrible. No, I'd vote for him again. He's somebody that I wouldn't necessarily be friends with. And he, I may not want to do business, but sometimes we need crazy people in charge. But he loved this country. He loved this country. And, and under his leadership, we did really, we were successful. Um, and, 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 and even though Biden has good intentions, we just look at the economy. The gas prices are skyrocketing. Crimes at an all-time high. Uh, Inflation is at an all-time high. It's not working out the way that people on the left had wished. And, you know, we, I don't wish him bad, Biden. I just wish that we'd had better outcomes. But everything he touches right now, they call him Biden touch. He's, he's, he's destroying everything. Are you kind of amazed at how many people still regurgitate and are listening, it's still standing up for him? When it'd be like working for someone who the, your business is dying yeah. and you're still going, oh, give him another chance, give him another chance. The policies are not working. Yeah. And it drives me crazy that everybody has to, oh, that's because yeah. Rick Dancer, is, he's a Republican. Yeah. And I'm not. I'm a non-affiliated yeah. voter. Yeah. But, but it's like we can't even criticize someone's inability to do the job because it's been so politicized. And it drives me absolutely yeah. crazy. <laughs> there's people on the right that do that, too. Like, like there's, you know, I'm not I'm never I'm always looking at positive anybody can bring to the table, whether you're Democrat, liberal. Uh, or a Democrat or independent or Republican. I, I wasn't always one that think that Trump did everything perfect either. Um, uh, and I didn't think that Obama did everything bad. Uh, I didn't like a lot of his politics, but uh, there, there's people on the right too. I mean, when there were certain things going on with Trump, people like thought he was perfect and he wasn't, uh, but he knew how to run a country better. So do you, oh, hold on. Let me play at one of our other yeah. commercials for one of our other people. Do you hang in? We'll be right back here. That's the wrong one. We already got your commercial in there. 
So we're switching it up a little bit today on the next stop on the taco tour. We're at Abby's Pizza on River Road. Um, all you North Eugene High School graduates out there, a shout out to you. This is my old stomping grounds. Anyway, we're going to have ourselves some taco pizza today. And here we go. Check it out. A little taco pizza. We're going to talk about real estate. Mm. That's always good. There we go. We're in unprecedented times right now. Interest rates have crept over 6%. When you might have had an $1,800 mortgage a year ago, it's over $2,200 now. I have lenders who can help. In your situation, give me a call. All right. Derek Roser, Roser Real Estate Group. Um, he was supposed to be on last week and I missed him. <laughs> so uh, there we go. We got him in there. So, Michael, um, what what's... What's the most frustrating part for you of watching what's happening in this country? I think the most frustrating thing is that people get over that people will hate other people just because of the political views. And I don't like I got to tell you, I was Democratic when I was going through college. I went to U of O. Um, and I still have certain like maybe like more environmental like leaning a little bit. But I don't know. It's just we're so steadfast. We're either you have to be left or you have to be right. And we can't be we can't you can't be supposed to be friends with people that are on the extreme left. That's what irritates me. And and also, I mean, it doesn't irritate me the negativity I get. I, I try to my staff will get messages and I don't want to listen to them. We get voice messages and emails and and you'll you'll have stuff, you know, you'll see. And I. That irritates me, but I know are, I think, you, I, you know. are you seeing, but I don't know. I think I am. Are you seeing a turnaround? Like where all of a sudden people are so done. They're going, yeah. you know what? If, if, if I voted for Trump, screw you. I, I can yeah. tell you who I voted for. I yeah. can tell you not who I voted for. If I liked Obama, I'm just not going to yeah. play this game where people get to put me in a box. It's like, I think COVID, the reaction to COVID allowed a certain ideology to put everybody in the same box if you didn't believe that the mask information, which is now coming out to be very true, and notice everybody's like quiet because the mask didn't work. And now people are just, you know, nobody's talking about that. And, and so everybody just hush hush like, well, that that didn't happen. And it- Okay, for, for, first of all, I wanna jump in there with the mask. That information was coming out months after the mask. Like, like, and I was listening to stuff. And, and the problem is that some people haven't even heard some of that stuff. I was all for masks. Don't, don't get me wrong. If they worked, but it wasn't working. When you had school districts right next to each other, some that didn't wear masks, some that did, and it was no difference whatsoever. Uh, I, I wish that it worked. It, just like the vaccines, I kind of wish the vaccines would actually work better than they did. Unfortunately, they just the 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 effect wears off super quick. But uh, people want to ignore the facts. And I thought we were, you know, especially when you're a dentist and you re research, you kind of hope the research is backed by real data. And it's like, I think there was research out there. It just was, it wasn't being covered by the media. Right. It was ignored. And yeah. then it even brought it up. Because remember, like I couldn't even have this conversation on Facebook um, yeah. six or seven months ago. They literally would shut down my, my, my page. And now people are talking about it, but it's like what, what always bothers me is, is as a news guy or a former news guy, is this even happened with the spotted owl for, for three, four, 10 years, it was the owl, the owl, the owl. Then they discovered actually the barred owl was destroying the spotted owl. So it wasn't the habitat issue, it was another owl. Oh, guess what? It was a veal bite on the news. That, you know, that means like a 45 second song and nobody talked about it anymore. It's like when we screw up, it's like when somebody on the, on the wrong side of an issue screws up, they badger you and beat you into the ground. But when, when, when the ideology of the moment makes a mistake, it's just whitewashed and moved on and we just go on to the next topic. I think that's just our product or society, though. We, 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 do, we do that on the right and we do that on the left. Uh, it just we see it a lot more on the left right now because uh, they have control over media more. But I think things are shifting. I think that we're. I, I really, as I talk to people, a lot of people will talk to me and they feel more emboldened lately. And, uh, uh, and I, I think that we're changing. I think we've kind of, sometimes I always tell my wife, we went from the seventies to the eighties, so it can happen again. And, and we're not talking to go super extreme, right? Again, we just want to have a happy medium. Right. I, but I think the, uh, it, it seems to me that also a lot of people who were semi quiet about things, um, saw how much the government can control your life if you let them, how much culture allowed that to happen. 
And it's like, and I think now that that's done, I would love to see before she leaves off as Governor Brown, try to do this again, because I think it's going to be a huge mess. Um, if it wasn't for the elections and the midterms coming up, it, it, they'd already be doing it. But well, we know, would be we would already be masked. I mean, when they when they put lifted the mask mandate, you realize we were at one of the highest uh, COVID uh, rates in, since COVID came out. We were super high, and lately in the last in the last couple of months, everybody I've known, like patients, have canceled. Hey, sorry, I got COVID. COVID has gone through Oregon like it never has in the last couple of months. Right. Uh, and it's funny, it's like it went high again. Then why, did, if the masks really were working, then why didn't we use the mask? The problem is, is nobody, I mean, maybe in a perfect system, we all wear N95 masks, we do it properly, but nobody does. Like it's on the plane. Nobody's, you know, always thought if you really want the N95 mask to work properly, everybody gets a brand new one before they get on the plane, they never take it off for a second. But when you start well, taking it off to eat, it kind of makes no sense. You see a little bit of mask here in Montana, but I saw a lady the other day. She had it down like this on her chin as she's talking to me. And I'm looking at her. She has a mask on her chin. And I'm going, you know, yeah, what's, what's the point? I think it's done when it's here. I think this is like just over the edge idiocy. You know? I, I, I went into on last Friday. I went into Safeway or Albus's, one of the South Eugene. I walked in. I'm like, oh, no. Did Kate Brown just enact the mask mandate? Everybody, everybody, everybody was wearing a mask. I maybe I saw two people without a mask, and I almost asked the guy in the front, but I got to tell you, asking people now like about the mask can offend people. So I just, you know, I just went shopping. I'm not putting on a mask. I know, that's, you know. People want to wear them. I think that's their right. But one yeah. thing I do find funny is Kathy and I will look at people. We'll see, like even here in Montana, you'll see all of a sudden you go in a bigger city. And you'll be in it and you go, oh, the news must be talking about this yeah, again. Yeah. Because yeah. we don't even pay attention anymore. Like, you know, we, we're not even listening to it. Okay. So I got another sponsor, Compton Family Wineries, um, the wines. And they put together this little video and you got to listen carefully, but you're going to hear some, some uh, crushing and grape language. So a red that I really like is our Pinot Noir, 2016 Llewellyn. Uh, it's nice and bright, fruit forward. It's really popular in our tasting room. Pinot Noir, bright, crisp, 2021. It's really popular. And then we've got our Pinot Blanc. To me, it's a little bit more interesting than Pinot Gris or Chardonnay. And I was just talking about a fun description for it. And all I want to say is I just fucking like it. I just fucking like it. <laughs> I don't know what to say more than that. I think that says it just pretty well, you know. She's um, Tabitha and her husband. They do everything in regenerative farming, and it's really cool because they're taking care of the soil at the same time that they're creating this wine. And they've been doing this for 20 years in Philomath and sell online. So, and they have a discount uh, code for Rick Dancer. If you guys are looking, go on their website. You can find the Rick Dancer discount. You save 15 bucks on your first order. So, anyway, but when she said that to Tim, I went, <laughs> "Oh, that's so great." Because it's just good wine. So, Michael, um, you you have actually so you know you've lost a little business because of your stand, but you've also gained. You had kind of talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I get you know the like I, I probably lose one patient for every ten patients I get. I get a lot of patients, uh, uh, so it's good, and we get a lot of patients. That we got a lot of hardworking. Uh, uh, people that work outside, a lot of them like, you know, like lumberjacks kind of, and uh, um, a lot of people from outside, like Junction City, Elmira, uh, Pleasant Hill, Oak Ridge, a lot of the outskirts, not so many people inside. I think if somebody Googles me and is really, you know, uh, like a Eugene Weekly reader, they're not going to come see me. Um, sometimes, oh, I, I mean, I got some people that come in that, you know, they have bumper stickers all over the car. And I don't care. Like, I'm going to make everybody, I don't care who they are. I'm going to make everybody feel comfortable. I'm going to do really good work on everybody. Uh, so I, I saw a guy today that came in and he had bumper stickers and, you know, left uh, bumper st left wing bumper stickers. And I'm like, that's cool. Whatever makes you happy in life. If it doesn't, you know, as long as you have passion and you don't want to shut me down, I'm okay with you. Right. And, 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 I and Rick, I didn't answer your question. Sorry. Uh, I thought uh, we went that commercial. Um, you did, I asked, you know, people ask why I spend the money for the billboards. You know, every dentist almost spends money uh, on advertising. And I, a long time ago, I thought of the campaign like ads that matter. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to spend the money. Why not do, do something that that sends a message out? 
And so that's one with working with you, but you know, like I, I didn't want us going back into another lockdown. So I thought, Hey, let's do a billboard. How effective it was it? Probably not very effective, but people it made people feel good when that they saw somebody that was on their side when we were in lockdowns, because we were all frustrated and we wanted to feel like somebody was like somebody was anti lockdowns. And that was me. Yeah. I'm going to disagree with you. I think it did a lot of good because I had a lot of people come up to me, especially back the blue. A lot of cops yeah. walk up, look side to side and then go, Rick, thank you. And tell Dr. Bradley, thank you. Um, yeah. they were, they're so appreciative. And I think the same thing with that. You don't know when people drive by there. I think there's a lot of people going, what you've done is you've opened the conversation because for so long, two long years, one ideology had the hold on the conversation. And for somebody to even critically think and say, hey, but what about this? You were shut down. And by those billboards, which is what I loved about it and what you allow yeah. me to do by helping to sponsor what we do and our other sponsors, is we're saying, here's another message. I'm not saying I'm 100% right, but good God, people, think for yourself. You don't, they can't. The government works for us and they can't tell us what to do. And a bunch of thugs who aren't, who just want to get online and beat you up. That doesn't stop me from talking unless you kill me. You know, I mean, I can still have a conversation. So I think you've kind of opened a door for people to be able to say, yeah, I, 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 I thought that, but I just, I didn't know that I could, you know, and that's what we, we need to get away from for November. So people can go, you know what? bullshit on this. I'm not doing this anymore. We really need more people thinking for themselves. And, and it doesn't mean you, you think like I do, but just right. think for yourself. Like I'm really just dumbfounded sometimes like, the, like Kavanaugh, like getting almost uh, murdered that yeah. people don't know about these things. I'm like, how do you not know? Like, I don't know if they just watch the same news networks constantly, but there are certain things about like the mass and the vaccination that when people are talking to, to me, I'm like, how do you not know at least some of the basics? Right. Or, yeah, I think people need to get off of watching like ABC and CBS and NBC nightly news. Because it, when I turn that stuff on, I turn it off because it's like, it's just, it's full of just, uh, it's just full of propaganda and also just it, it's it's full of murders and like it just doesn't make you feel good no. so people need to open their eyes and, and 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 get different sources that's one thing i love about joe rogan he's very open-minded you know yeah. I, I don't believe his political he has different political views but he just he accepts everybody he and, makes and me feel good when i listen because the other day I'm yeah. Like, yeah i totally agree with your stand on covid and what you're asking questions you're asking and what you did yeah. then he got on you know, current politics and who would be the best president and stuff like yeah. that. And I went, okay, I don't agree with you on that. But, but what it felt good, Michael, was it was like, this feels like the old days when, yeah, I, I like this, this, and this, but this, this, and this, I disagree. And then I walked away. I still, I still watch him. I still listen yeah. to him. I'm not mad at him. It wasn't no. like this thing where it's like, you know, and, and that's kind of what, you know, we've seen with even our audience is like people just get mad. I'm tired of your people, your hate mongers. And it's like, well, that's because you're defining hate very narrow mindedly because by you leaving my page because you don't like those hate mongers, you're kind of a hate monger because you hate people who think differently than you and you don't want to hear it. And you, you know, and I think that's what we got to get back to in this country is having conversations like this where we can do that and not be censored by people. And yeah, freedom matters to me. I had one guy say about your, the Joe Rogan and them, oh yeah, like freedom's such a big deal. And I thought, well, it gives you the right to bring your scuzzy yeah. little ass on my page and say what you want to say and, and, and bark at me and then walk away. You know, it's just, it's, I, I don't think people understand what it is. You know, I know you really well. I don't, and, and me too, I don't have a lot of hate in my, in, in, in my head. I really don't. Like, I don't hate different races. I don't hate different people. Like, I, I like, and it's funny, the more we talk about it, I think that causes more division. Like, and I always give this story that we moved from Roseburg, which everyone would think is a racist, you know, racist town because they don't have a lot of minorities. But my kids never, my kids never, ever thought about it. We didn't talk about it in the house. They had friends that were all different races. And then they come to Eugene and they remember within the first year, they're like, dad, there's all this racism going on. I'm like, really? Is there really? Or because we're in Roseburg where there's not a lot of minorities. Did you look at those minorities any differently? No, then there's not. But it's being taught in the media and the school and the kids, you know, the teachers are constantly telling the kids they're white and they're racist and they're privileged. And it's just, it's a hateful speech. It really is. 
we well, need to go yeah. back to just not you know i mean just going back to like not not caring about race as much do you remember when this i remember being in the news business when the slogan was that we see no color yeah which i always thought was kind of silly because of course i see color i see you as white. but i mean but we don't define people based on their color or their politics it's like you're a human being and let's start having a conversation and then we may like or not like each other but i also was hearing a radio station today and they're talking about bipoc and how most people in the communities that that even affects don't even give a shit about it it's like it doesn't this isn't even these are words you're using words that none of us even use and I think it's time for the general public, and that's left, right, middle, all of us, to start going, you know what? We're not playing your game anymore. You can bring all your little language and all your little stuff, and, but, but we're, we're going to work together to do the things that we're supposed to do. Create good schools. Create safe atmospheres for people. Safer schools for people. You know, I mean, to do the things that we can do. And stop worrying about terms and names and whether what your pronoun is or your, you know, I can't do the pronoun thing because I'm sorry, a person, one person is not a they. You can think you're a they, they, but you can't be a they. It's you're an it. And I know you don't want to be an it because an it is a bad thing, I guess. But that's grammar. That's grammatically what it is. And I, don't get, I, don't, I, I don't get the they thing. I, I mean, I can understand maybe, the, I don't know, the they thing. How, you can't be plural. <laughs> like, you can't be a plural like, unless you're a multiple personality. Word. Otherwise, you're not plural and you're an it. And, and otherwise, and so I can be an it if I want to be, but I can't be a they. So you can't tell me to call you something that is absolutely can't happen because of, of grammar, you know, for me. And it's like, I think that's where it's just so weird because do I respect you because you're, 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 you have a different sexuality or you, you, you identify as a woman? I totally yeah. have friends that can, I can do yeah. that. I don't care. Yeah. It doesn't bother me. But don't criticize me when I'm not going to call you a pronoun because it doesn't, because I, I just can't, yeah. you know, you're, you're John or Sherry or Bill or Bob, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's just gotten insane. You probably don't have those issues, though, in, in Montana as much, do you? Unless you get close to a university. Yeah. Just in, and you know, they, like they're having, um, uh, there's, you know, there's stuff going on in Helena and other, the bigger towns and stuff like that, which I think is good. I mean, if it, you know, it's like they're having, in fact, I think in next month they're having, a, um, like 10,000 people here for a, a gay pride kind of thing. I saw it on the paper there the other day and that's great. I mean, you're bringing people in like, you know, to, to have a conversation and get people thinking and talking about it. But, um, you know, I, I just, it's a different, it's a different, it, it still has inclusiveness here, you know, where you can, people can think differently. And I think, you know what I find mostly even rural Oregon too. You know, I mean, I remember some of my gay and lesbian friends used to say, oh yeah, you don't want to get out in the country um, in Oregon. Cause you know, but I'll tell you what, I think they're more accepting of people than people in the big cities, honestly, as much oh, as all ab the absolutely. Evidence, absolutely. You know, it's like if you 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 sleep with who you want to sleep with, and you do what you want to do, and we'll welcome you into community. But um, but I but don't make me have to think a certain way about whatever it is. Just leave just leave me alone, and I can I can accept that. And I think that's how people are. But it's like it's always pushing for um, something more than that. It's just and, more and more and more. It's like gun control. To just take a little bit more and more away from uh, from the rights of individuals. So do you think, this is the last thing I'll ask you, and I love yeah. talking, this is kind of fun. Um, so do you think that there's going to be a red tide on this fall? Oh, yeah, I think so. I just hope that the, the real red tide I want to happen is two and a half years from now. So I worry that we have a red tide in November, and then that's not the red wave in, uh, in uh, 2024. Uh, so we, we need, I, I think there's a lot of people, I've had a lot of people that are, that voted for Biden, that are family members or friends, and they wish they had it. Uh, I thought the writing was on the wall. Uh, the, I thought that was pretty obvious, but um, I think there is going to be, and uh, and I hope we can sustain it. And and I am one of those people that believe that, but I'm, I'm, I believe that it's never good to have too far to the right and too far to the left. I think it's always, that, it, it, and, and, and that's why like, you know, the Betsy Johnson, you know, I, I, I'm paying for one of her boards to be up. Uh, I don't believe in everything she, her, her, 
everything that she has voted on, but I, I think she's a good hearted person. And she yeah. believes she believes that she believes uh, that she can work with Republicans and Democrats. And I think that's what we need more of people that are willing to work, actually, to be in, be in power and, and not just go extreme to the right, extreme to the left, but somebody that's willing to kind of work with everybody. And she is. That's why yeah. I like her. Well, she and she I think she loves Oregon and she yeah, wants she doesn't. to she doesn't want to be governor. She wants to lead the state. And that's a big difference. There's a lot of people who want to be governor. Um, yeah, Brown. And, and, and I'm going to say this too, Rick. Sorry, is you know I don't know a lot about the Republican Republican candidate, and and I probably you know I'll, I'll know more later on. But right now, I really do like Betsy Johnson. She's just a good-hearted person yeah. that is sincere and, and and wants to see less crime, wants to see less uh, uh, homeless. She wants to take care of the homeless problem, and uh, and she she believes in gun rights, and so I, I think she's a good person. Really I good. think the biggest problem is going to be the Republicans who are the hardliners who go, yeah. nope, I'd never vote for a former Democrat yeah. to be here. Um, and, and, that's, and, and then what you're going to have is the definition of insanity. The same thing Oregonians have done for 40 years, waiting for that perfect Republican candidate yeah. who agrees with everything they want. Yeah. And then what do you end up with? More Democrats. You're not going to yeah. have, we haven't had a Republican governor in, since Vicatia. And that's the reason is that you get off your high horse and pick somebody who actually could win, who could probably do more than any of the other candidates are going to do. And that's Betsy. And I hope yeah. Oregon's is smart enough to do that. But I, I don't know. There's the infighting and the parties and the, and the gnawing and stuff. Yeah. It's just like, oh, it just drives me insane. We need a better balance. We need, we don't need it controlled. It's like California, when you get too far to the one side, it gets crazy. It, it would be nice to have more of a balance. And so I hope, I hope it just slowly occurs, you know, like that we, we start getting more seats slowly and, and we see more balance. Cause I think that's better for any society not to have be run solely by one party. Yeah. To have the, the biggest problem Oregon has right now is a super majority yeah. and it's, it's, it's a Democrat one, but it could, but if, even if it's a, and I've said this all the time, there should never be a super majority. I, I, I vote for a bunch of Democrats or Republicans just to even out the high, the, 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 the balance there, because otherwise what, this is what you have is yeah. you have a, a governor who can do whatever the hell she wants and, and a legislature that's scared to death to even approach her because she's got so much power and then Republicans who are, have no power whatsoever, can't do anything, even open a door. And then you have the people in Oregon suffering for it. And that's that's a, a really bad situation. So, you know, and then we could go on and on about the causes, mail-in elections, some people say. Redistricting is definitely a problem. But when you have balance in Oregon, then you can't, you won't have legislators that get to draw the lines to, to benefit their party. And that's going to yeah. take years to undo. But... You got to start somewhere. Yeah. And I think your billboards have been help very helpful, Michael. Thank you. So, hey, thank you for that chat. That was fun. Yeah. yeah I got cool. myself in some trouble and you did too. But hey, you know what? Yeah. You know, done, I don't, I don't know. Done pandering <laughs> to the groups yeah. and the people yeah. and their bullshit. Um, not going to do that anymore. Yeah. I don't All right, that. buddy. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> see you later. Bye. See ya. All right, Dr. Michael Ratlin, uh, and, you know, I'm going to just pitch it for you, for you if you are. If you're looking for a dentist who really does believe what he says and really does care about people, um, whether you have a ABC bumper stickers on your car, um, you know, and besides, you can't trust bumper stickers. And you guys noticed recently that it used to be a shitty old Volvo with um, kill your TV, uh, don't trust government, um, uh, don't trust the news, all those bumper stickers, those were Democrats. Now that Volvo is a Republican. <laughs> they just went so far extreme to the left and right that they've turned into each other. And that's why the non-affiliated voters are the largest growing population in Oregon. So let your voices be heard. Go and do something and get involved in this stuff. And if you don't like Betsy Johnson, go find out something about her that you do like. Go look into all the candidates. Do your homework. Critically think. Don't let them tell you what to do. I hope this stays on. <laughs> Have a good night. And tomorrow, what we got Elements Health Club's coming tomorrow night. Um, I've got an interview later next week, but it's this week I'm going to do the interview with a uh, 
financial planner. We're not going to talk about how you can plan your finances. We're going to talk about what about the recession that may be coming and uh, what people can do, that kind of stuff. We've also got um, – uh, who else? Oh, t- uh, tomorrow? No, Wednesday night. I've got Ben Idle from Free Oregon. Uh, he and I are going to do just what Bratlin and I did. We're just going to sit here and talk about what we want to talk about and not worry about how people in the audience respond or what they're going to say online. We're just going to have a conversation because here's the bottom line. I don't live there anymore, but I do love Oregon. And Oregon is worth fighting for. And in order to fight, you have to use your voice. This is not a battle of beating people up. This is a battle of the voice. And you have to use your voice. And you have to be courageous. And you have to be uh, go against the grain a little bit. But the only power that, that, uh, that, that, that the manipulators of the message have is if you bow. And we are not bowing in Oregon. Um, I left because I'm 63 years old and I can't put up with that shit anymore. But I can still fight from afar. For those of you who think I can't, go to hell. Doesn't matter to me, I can't. But I'm not gonna live in it. Have a good night, we'll see you tomorrow. And share this on your page so other people can get encouraged to do something other than whine or to follow. We don't need any more followers in Oregon. We have plenty.